Hi, I'm Skip Brown, SES Academy. Welcome to our first video on industrial motor controls. Welcome to our uh, studio, as it were. Uh, when we talk about industrial motor controls, <clears throat> we, everybody has to wonder, well, what's the big deal with industrial motor controls? If we go back to motors themselves, we're looking at the load that consumes approximately two thirds of the electrical power on the planet. So anything we can do to make them more efficient reduce carbon emissions, uh, help to uh, restore the and, and improve uh, uh, reusable uh, technology, reusable energy is good. And the way we make a motor good or more efficient is how we control it. Now, the motor itself is fairly straightforward. The circuitry is technically fairly straightforward, pretty simple. We start with a source of three phases, A phase, B phase, and C phase power. This can be uh, 208, it can be uh, 480, it can be 4160. In Europe, it can be uh, uh, 240, 380. Okay, but the concept is three phases of power. So I pick up these phases of power, and the first thing I want to do is I want to make sure that I've got short circuit protection. So I've got a circuit breaker, okay? The next step <clears throat> is to energize this motor with a block of contactors. These are normally open contactors. They close, they transfer the power out of the contactor to what we call heaters or overloads. This is a bad drawing, but it's the best you're gonna get from this artist, okay? These are, uh, representative of heating elements for overload protection. And then from there, basically, we take the power to the motor and we're done. So there's basically, diagrammatically anyway, your entire motor circuit. Short circuit protection, contactor, overload protection, and motor. The control part is making this contactor come on when we want it to. And this is the part that gets a little complicated. Now, in a control circuit with uh, three-phase control equipment, such as what we're looking at right here, we have essentially an off-on switch. We can see three phases of power coming into the top of the contactor. Three phases of power would connect here. Out we go. Three wires in, three wires out, and we're done. However, if you look close, you can see that we're also tapping A and B phase to power up this transformer, okay? So this is a control transformer that's gonna give us control power. Well, what do we typically see on a control circuit? If we look at this cabinet right here, we can see some of the manual functions that we do with motor controls. Okay, first of all, Control power is on. Pump one run, pump two run. We have control power off on. Uh, high level alarm, low level alarm. Okay, we have a horn silence. We select a pump, handoff automatic, handoff automatic. And once again, this is very, very uh, plain vanilla manual control of motors. We do this coming off of the low voltage transformer in the control panel. This is the back side of the control cabinet we just looked at. HOA switches, selector switches, and so forth. Once again, we have 480 volts coming in the top of the panel. We have two motor circuits right here, two motor starters. Okay, we, these are our overcurrent protection, excuse me, our short circuit protection. So these basically are our circuit breakers. We have two of them in here, okay? We take 480 volts to the primary of the control transformer, transforming the 480 volts down to 120. And off of that 120, we control all of these functions. So that essentially is motor control. And this is a fully manual motor control system. This is not designed to be connected to a programmable controller or any type of automated systems. 
okay? Motor so. controls control the motor for the most efficient operation possible. And of course, when we're in a, any sort of um, uh, industrial environment, process environment, and so on, there's other considerations. Number one, safety. We want to make absolutely certain that the motors are operating in a way that they're not going to do any damage to, biz to uh, the building or to any equipment. But we also want to make sure that nobody working on these is going to be hurt, damaged, get splashed with acid, crushed, what have you. Because this is a fairly small motor, but in our experience, we work with motors that run 5,000 horsepower and up. And if they're not controlled properly, they could seriously do some damage. Okay, so that's the, uh, the bottom line with motor controls. When we start with motor controls, we have a circuit like this for power. We also have a convention that we use for motor controls. And we use a drawing for this. Now, usually when we do a logic or ladder diagram drawing, which I'll explain, it doesn't look anything like the wiring that you see here. This wiring is derived from a sequence of operation which comes from a ladder diagram, a motor control ladder diagram. So the, all this wiring, the way it's installed, how it's connected, and also the numbering of these conductors comes from a drawing. The drawing is, is, a, is a very straightforward, uh, if you would, would like, you can call it a logic diagram uh, of how the motors are going to operate. So let's get into some of the basics of the ladder diagram. Okay, when we looked at these, when we looked at these starters, I was pointing to some, some very general, just general direction on, on, um, on the transformer. So let's get into the transformer, which is generally the source of power for our controls. So here I have, let's say for instance, I have 480 volts, and this is most typical. That's 480 volts alternating current. And this is your typical industrial heavy commercial operating voltage. Now what I want to do for a variety of reasons is I want to get my control voltage down to 120 volts AC. Why 120 volts AC? Lots of reasons. Number one, I don't want my operators hitting buttons that have got 480 on them. Okay, two reasons there. One is safety. The other one, if I'm arcing 480 volts, on my controls, I'm going to wear out my buttons really quick. Also, auxiliary switches, it's very, very difficult to get 480 volt indicating lights. So the convention today, and there are probably other reasons I haven't even thought of, but the convention today is controls 120 or even 24 volts, power 480. Higher voltage, uh, you get more power per size of wire per ampere of current flow. So we go 480 on the power side, 120 on the control side. Let's take a look at how we're going to get that. Okay, um, and this, the, the blue part here is still going to be 480, but I want you to think of this as controls. So what I want to do is I want to tap two phases of 480. Okay, bring them over here and I want to fuse them because the transformer will only draw half of an amp at the most. And the motor, this could be a 50 horse motor drawing 70 or 80 amps. So I'm gonna reduce the size of the wire under a tap rule. I'm gonna put a, uh, let's say a 0.5 amp fuse here and a 0.5 amp fuse here. Okay, from here, this is diagrammatic of course. I have the primary of my control transformer. Control transformer can be as small as 20 volt amps. If you've got a lot of motors, you can have a thousand volt amp transformer. In other words, a kilowatt, okay? On the secondary side, and this is, this is the side that we're gonna be working with, I'm gonna have a secondary winding, okay? And this is gonna be my low voltage. So up here I have 480. The only thing I did with a single phase 480 is I fused it. Coming off here, I've got 120. Okay, and there's a, there's a, a number of different ways that these can be designated. Okay, um, if you ground it, 
let's say you, uh, you take this to ground, then you have what's called a, a grounded control system. And everything, everything from here is actually going to be a neutral. Okay? Now, if that's a ground, I've also got a hot side, so I want to protect everything in the field, so I want to put a fuse here. Okay? Now, once I get to this point, this is pretty much the power part of motor controls. Once again, I've got 480 here, 480 on the primary of the transformer, 120 on the secondary of the transformer, okay? Uh, and everything else here is 120 volts. Now, you're probably thinking, well, yeah, but what does this have to do with turning the motor on? Well, I've also got a motor coil. Somewhere in this diagram, I'm going to have a motor coil. I'm going to label it M. And that motor coil, you can see this, is going to be mechanically linked to close those three sets of contacts. Okay? Something that I've been trying to get my students to understand, and it often takes a couple of shots, there's absolutely no common current flow between the motor current and the control current. As a matter of fact, by code, this control transformer, although it falls under a number of exceptions, constitutes a separately derived system. So there's no, no electrical connection between the control circuitry and the power circuitry, even though the control circuitry makes the motor start. Okay? I keep asking for questions, but obviously in this format, we're not going to have questions. So one thing I need to do with, a, with this circuit, several things I need to do, uh, but one thing I need to do now is to get 120 volts to this motor coil to make it energize. Now, if we take a look at, this should be the better one to look at. If we take a look at this starter right here. I'm going to pull this out and we're going to take a look at it and see how it's made. But I have an electromagnetic coil. Now, this coil, when I, when I uh, apply a voltage to it, current's going to flow through the coil like an electromagnet. Go back to your middle school science class where you had a magnet and the iron filings all lined up with it. So we know that, that we can create a magnetic field that has force. Instead of using a magnet, we put a piece of, of uh, iron inside of a winding of wire, run current through that, and we get a magnetic field. And because it's alternating current, it expands and contracts, and we can even put a piece of iron in there and draw a plunger in. So the starter actually has a plunger that's going to draw these three contacts closed. That's, that's the essence of motor control. I put 120 volts on the motor coil, and I can draw this thing closed. So this is, this is it. This is the motor, the basics of the motor control system. And we're going to take a break here, and then we're going to get into the diagram that we're going to use uh, to show how we're going to do this.